Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. As you might know, in my YouTube channel, I am making videos on machine learning and machine learning course. And one of the most requested videos in my channel is interview questions and answers for machine learning. So I decided that I'll finally make this video and I hope you are excited as well to learn about this. So interview preparation for machine learning is one thing that has been generally overlooked. A lot of people don't focus on this, but this is very important if you want to get a good job in machine learning or deep learning or data science. There are, uh, you know, a lot of people who have learned so much about machine learning, who have worked on different projects related to machine learning, but they may not be able to perform well in an interview. And the reason is that they may not have prepared specifically for an interview situation. So that's the issue. And that is the reason I'm making this video. In this particular video, I'll explain you what are the different aspects of a machine learning interview, what are the things you should focus on and let's also discuss some of the most important interview questions for machine learning. So this is the agenda for this particular video and let's get started right away. So when we think about a machine learning interview, there are three aspects on which a person will be tested. So the first aspect is what is your theoretical knowledge or what is your technical knowledge on machine learning? So you will be asked a lot of basic questions and a basic to complex question in machine learning. So that will be your first uh, part and this will help the interviewer to know whether uh, you are clear about all the basic concepts related to machine learning. So that will be the first uh, aspect of this interview. And then you will also be tested on what is your Python programming skills. As you know that in machine learning, we do most of the programming in Python and you should have a strong skill in Python programming. And uh, there are also specific parts in Python which we need to focus on for specific machine learning problems. Say for example, we should have uh, worked on a lot of uh, problems related to NumPy, uh, Pandas and SKLearn library because these are very important for machine learning problems. So you will also be tested on these aspects of Python programming. And the third and final aspect will be the real world problems. So they might uh, give you some data set and they might uh, ask you to do some predictions on it or they may ask you to do some analysis based on some machine learning models and so on. So these are the three aspects which you should be clear before going on to an interview. Okay. So in my channel, I'll, I'll make a series of videos. I'll make videos once in a while about interview questions and all these aspects. So that would be uh, very useful for you once uh, you go for an interview okay and this is not a uh, not a topic that we can make in a single video so i'll just make this in a multiple video and in this particular video let's discuss about some of the most basic and important theoretical questions on machine learning okay so these are the 10 questions that we are going to discuss today in our video okay and these are like a very simple questions yet these yet these are very important you might uh, just look at some question and say that this is very simple and i already know the answer but i suggest that you watch this video completely and you take notes of all these questions and answers that i am going to give you because we know that interview is a pressure situation and we need to perform well in that uh, situation in order to do that you need to focus well on your uh, preparations so if you are relaxed in your, in your interview then you can really perform well and if you are tensed that is a problem then like you cannot perform well in an interview so the only way you can be without any stress is to have a good preparation about your interview and if you have a good understanding about all these questions and you have good answers with you and you can be really confident and you can just put the words together in an interview and easily answer the questions okay so that is the reason i'm telling you just take notes of these questions in a, in a way that you understand okay so as i told you we will start from the most basic questions so the first question will be explain artificial intelligence in simple words okay so the interviewer will expect you to give you a, a simple uh, explanation for uh, ai okay so they may not uh, expect you to give some definition so they don't need definitions but they just wanted to know whether you understand the concepts clearly okay so you just have to give some clear explanations and simple explanations so we will discuss how we can do that for artificial intelligence and let's uh, answer the second question which is what is your understanding on machine learning and how will you distinguish artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning and what is deep learning what are the limitations of deep learning and the sixth question which we are going to discuss will be what is a machine learning model and how does a machine learning model learns from the data and these two questions are very tricky and important a lot of people may not answer this question properly when a person asks what is a machine learning model some people may say that uh, you know 
a neural network, a logistic regression, a support vector machine, etc. Yes, they are machine learning models, but what is a machine learning model? So we need to have a clear answer for this. And the next question is, how does a machine learning model actually re learns from the data? So this is another uh, basic questions that we need to be very clear of. And the eighth question which we will be discussing is, what are the different types of machine learning? And then what are the different types of supervised learning? And finally, let's discuss about uh, what are the different applications of machine learning. So these are the things that we will discuss in this particular video. And I'll give the timestamps for all these questions in the uh, video description. You can, uh, you know, go to that particular question in which you are interested in. But I suggest that you watch all these uh, questions completely, even if you know the answer. Okay. And uh, in the coming videos, we can move on to the more complex question and so on. Okay. So let's get started. So the first question that we have is explain artificial intelligence or AI in simple words. So how we can explain this is artificial intelligence is a branch of computer science that is concerned with building smart and intelligent machines. So what is meant by a smart or intelligent machine? We can call a machine intelligent if it can make its own decisions. Okay. So let's say that we have machines like a watch or a bike. So these are machines that have been programmed to do one specific thing. Say for example, a watch knows how to show the time and a bike knows how to move on a road. But these machines cannot take their own decisions and hence we can call these as non-intelligent machines. On the other hand, we have intelligent machines. Say for example, let's uh, uh, think about an autonomous car like Tesla. So a Tesla car is an intelligent machine because it can make its own decision. Say, for example, it knows when to increase the acceleration. It knows when to put on the brake and when to take a turn and so on. So these are the decisions that are made by the system automatically without the intervention of the driver. So hence, we can call this as an intelligent machine. And we can also think about something like Google Assistant. So every one of us would have noticed this Google Assistant in our phone. And if you ask something to your Google Assistant, it will uh, give you the most appropriate answer. And you won't realize that it is a computer. It is a machine right so it seems as if it is a real person because the answers are that accurate so these are tasks so the driving is a task and speaking to a person is a task which these machines do and these are tasks that requires intelligent and uh, we just wanted to create machines that can carry out this intelligent tasks and uh, this technology uh, to create this smart and intelligent machines is called as artificial intelligence okay so that is the definition you can give for artificial intelligence and this is just a broader domain uh, of computer science okay and uh, whenever you are answering this kind of questions in an interview it is uh, very advisable to give examples like this because if you give examples like this it means that uh, you have a clear understanding of the concepts and it really helps the interviewer to know how deep you understand the concepts okay so you can uh, give uh, you know answers like this so i'm not asking you to give the exact answer but uh, give answers something like this okay so you can just take notes of this you can uh, add your own words and you can also use uh, you know your own examples the ones which you find interesting and so on okay so i'm just giving a giving you a blueprint of how you can answer these questions so the next question which we are going to discuss is what is your understanding on machine learning? So a lot of people don't have a clear understanding or you know don't understand the clear difference between the term artificial intelligence and machine learning and that is one thing you need to be clear of before going to a machine learning related interview. Okay, so let's discuss about this machine learning. Machine learning is a technique to implement AI that can learn from the data by themselves without being explicitly programmed. Okay, so the first part of this definition is that Machine learning is a technique to implement AI. So we have discussed that AI is nothing but it is a technique to implement or it is a technique to build smart and intelligent machines, right? In order to build the smart and intellig intelligent machines, we are going to use machine learning, okay? And how we will do that is by making the machine to learn from the data by itself, okay? So the machine should learn from uh, the data by itself without being explicitly programmed. Say, for example, let's say that we want a computer to look at an image and say whether that image represents an apple or a mango okay so in order to build this system what we will do is we will train our uh, system with lots of images of apples and mango in this case the data that we have is image data okay so the images of apple and mango and we will give the label for each images so all the images of apple will be named as uh, apples and all the images of mangoes will be labeled as mangoes and we will feed all this data to our machine learning model and our machine learning model will try to find the similar patterns within this data say for example it find you know it understands that all the apple it looks red in color and this will be the shape of the apple and so on so the model the machine learning model will uh, find all by itself 
and it will try to find how the pattern of a mango looks like and all those things and once the model has learned from this image data if you give a new image and if you don't tell whether that image is an apple or a mango your machine learning model can tell whether it is an apple or mango because it has learned from the data so this is how machine learning works so where we make the model to learn from the data by itself and we don't you know explicitly program it so what this explicitly programmed means is so we don't tell the machine learning model that an apple looks red in color or we won't tell that a mango looks uh, yellow in color so we won't do that the model will uh, find by itself so that is the uh, you know meaning of this last part of the sen sentence which is uh, without being explicitly programmed okay so a uh, machine learning is a technique to implement ai that can learn from the data by themselves without being explicitly programmed and i hope you are clear about machine learning now and now you should be able to tell the difference between ai and machine learning where ai is a technique to build machines and in order to build those smart machines we are going to use machine learning and machine learning mainly uses data to learn from it okay and the third most important question is how will you distinguish artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning okay so this is one of the most basic yet important question and a lot of people don't know a clear answer for it okay so let's try to answer this this picture clearly depicts the difference between them okay so basically they are not the same thing and some people think that uh, they all mean the same thing but it's not so artificial intelligence is a broader field so we know that it is used to build smart and intelligent machines and machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence and deep learning is further is a subset of machine learning okay so we know that machine learning is a technique which we use to implement ai right to implement artificial intelligence and again deep learning is a subset of machine learning so it is uh, deep learning works similar uh, to how machine learning works but there is only a small difference in it and we can call that or we can say that deep learning is a subset of machine learning and machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence and this is the answer that you can give and the next question is the continuation of this particular question okay so now we need to answer what is meant by deep learning so that will be our fourth question so how we can answer this is Deep learning is a subfield of machine learning as I have told you now. So this deep learning uses artificial neural networks to learn from the data. So this is very important. So in machine learning, we have a lot of uh, models. So we have logistic regression, support vector machine, random forest, etc. So these are different models that we have in machine learning and there are a lot of them. In deep learning, we use special types of models called as artificial neural networks. So if you specifically use neural networks, then we can call that as deep learning and it also learns from the data. So it is not different from machine learning as we know. So the only difference is that it specifically uses only artificial neural network. Okay. So the idea for artificial neural networks came from the neurons that we have in our brain. So this is how a neuron or a nerve cell looks in our uh, brain and it has a cell body, axon dendrites and so on. So the information uh, you know uh, reaches this particular point so as you can see a branch like structures here and this is the point where information reaches and uh, from this dendrites the information will move on to the cell nucleus where it will be processed once the information is processed it will be transported to this last terminal called as axon and in this axon there will be other neurons so the dendrites of other neurons and this uh, cycle will go on so the information will start uh, you know start moving from this dendrites get processed in this cell nucleus and it will move on to other uh, nerve cell or a neuron through this axon so similarly that is how an artificial neural networks work and this is uh, created based on the model of neuron that we have in our brain so we have multiple neurons so each circle each of this circle can be considered as a neuron and uh, these are nothing but the nucleus that we have in our uh, neuron okay so and each uh, neuron has a specific mathematical function associated to it and the information will be processed say for example we have the image data speech data numerical data and so on so all this data will be processed in this neuron which has some mathematical uh, function in it and once it has been passed you know once it has been processed it will move on to the next neuron and so on so all these circles uh, represent individual neurons and the entire network is called as an artificial neural network and uh, in an artificial in, uh, neural network the first layer we have is the input layer and this is the in the input layer we will give the data set and the data will be processed here and it will uh, move on to the hidden layer so you can have multiple hidden layers so there is not you know a particular limit as if there should be this this number of hidden layers that number of hidden layer and so on so that is not in the case of neural network so you can have multiple uh, hidden layers and finally you will have an output layer and this output layer will tell you uh, what is the output output is say for example 
we want to uh, you know uh, we want a system we want a computer to look at an image and uh, tell what that image represents so it can be a, a human it can be a dog it can be a, or a cat and so on so this output layer gives that final output of what that particular image represents okay so in a deep neural network we have an input layer and then we have some hidden layers and finally we have an output layer and this artificial neural network the neurons in the neural network are uh, you know built based on the understanding of the neurons that we have in our brain okay so this is about uh, deep learning so the fifth question that we have is what are the limitations of deep learning so deep learning is used in a lot of fields and lot of domains so it is used in health care it is used in autonomous cars like tesla and so on but this deep learning has some limitations and this is one of the questions that you can be asked in an interview and uh, the limitations of deep learning are neural networks need a lot of data to make decisions okay so we have discussed about uh, neural networks right and these neural networks we need to feed them with a lot of data like you know uh, thousands or even lakhs of data and that is one main limitation of it because in, uh, it is hard to collect the data for this it is not uh, you know the data is not always available and that is one limitations if we don't have that much amount of data then we cannot use neural network so that is one limitation and the second limitation is it needs uh, high computational power so neural networks are like a very complex functions and in order to uh, implement them we need high computational powers so we need gpus and tpus and uh, machines like that okay so you need high computational powers in order to implement this uh, deep neural networks and this is one of the limitations as you know this can be uh, expensive right so uh, computers with i uh, you know systems and i uh, specifications are expensive and that is one limitations of deep learning and the third uh, limitations is its implementation is complex than machine learning models so we have simple machine learning models like logistic regression support vector machines etc and these are very easy to implement but uh, implementing deep learning you know deep learning requires a lot of knowledge and it is more complex than the machine learning so and that is we can consider that was one of the limitations and the last limitation that we can think of is training the neural networks requires a lot of time so as you might know as i've told you earlier it requires a lot of data and it is very complex right so neural networks are very complex and hence the training the neural networks with uh, this huge amount of data will take a long time so it can also this training process can also take days or even weeks so th these are some limitations that we can think of uh, about deep learning so one is it needs a lot of data and we know that the data is not easily available in some cases so this is one limitation and it needs high computational power because of its complexity and it is uh, a bit harder to implement uh, because as it is complex and training the neural uh, network requires a lot of time okay so these are some limitations that we can think about uh, this deep learning okay so the sixth question that we have is what is a machine learning model so this like this is like very important uh, you know question in this question series so what is a machine learning model and the next question we will discuss is how does a machine learning model learns from the data so just pay uh, you know uh, good attention to this particular question so a machine learning model is a function that tries to find the relationship between the features and the target variable okay so a machine learning model will try to you know equate or try to relate the features and the target so what is meant by this features and target let's say that we want to build a machine learning system that can predict the salary of a person if we give the number of years of experience of that particular person let's say that if a person has 2 years of experience he gets a monthly salary of about uh, uh, 20000 rupees if he has a uh, you know uh, experience of about 4 years he makes a salary of about 50000 rupees and so on so we have all this data and we want to use a model to uh, you know determine the salary a person makes using uh, the number of years of experience in this case the target is what is the salary the person is making because it is something that we want to find and in this case the feature is nothing but the number of years of work experience of the person so what a model tries to do is it will try to find the relationship between the years of experience experience and the salary of the person okay so we know that if a person has a higher number of uh, years of experience and is more probably will make more amount of salary right so the model will try to find this relationship so we won't tell the model that uh, if the salary if the experience increases the salary increases so we won't tell the model but the model will try to find it by themselves so this is uh, the importance of a machine learning model which tries to find the relationship between the features and the target and it is nothing but a function okay so functions like we can say that it is y is equal to f of x so we write this kind of equation in algebra right algebra right so y is equal to f of x means the value of y depends on the value of x 
and there is some uh, relation to it which is uh, you know related by some function so in this case y is our salary x is our years of experience so it is a function that relates them and uh, it tries to find the pattern in the data it understands the data and trains on the data based on this learning a machine learning model makes prediction and recognizes pattern so look at this first part of the statement it tries to find the pattern in the data so in the salary example as i show uh, as i told you so the pattern is nothing but if uh, the years of experience increases the salary also increases so the model tries to capture this pattern and it will try to understand the data and learn from it okay so this process is called as training uh, training okay so training our model with the data and once the model has learned from this data it can make new predictions say uh, we have trained our model with years of experience and salary so once the model has learned from this data if you say that uh, what is the salary a person can make if he has a 10 years of experience and your model can give you that particular value okay so this is the second part which tells us a machine learning model makes predictions and recognizes pattern once it has learned from it okay so we have different uh, models in machine learning like logistic regression support vector machines k-means clustering etc so these are some examples of a machine learning model where machine learning model is nothing but some functions so all these uh, models will have different functions associated to them say for example a logistic regression model will have a sigmoid function linear regression model will have a linear equation so similarly different model will have different uh, equations related to it now let's try to understand how does a machine learning model learns from the data so this is again a very important thing that you need to clearly understand okay so let's say that we have two set of values so one is uh, the x values and the another one is the y values okay so this x can be anything so we can you know uh, consider this as the years of experience as we have discussed before and y can be the salary of a person similarly we have two sets of data one is x and the other one is y and we can say that this y value depends on this x value so if the x value is one we get a y value of 5 if the x value is a 2 the y value is 7 and so on so there is some relationship between them but we don't know what is this relationship okay so if we try to find the relationship we can clearly understand how does a machine learning model learns from the data so that is the reason i am giving you this example okay so let, let's look at this data and let's try to plot this data so I'm just taking the x values in this x axis and y value in the y axis and I have plotted this data. So the first data point is 1 comma 5, right? So x coordinate is 1 and the y coordinate is 5. So I'm plotting this point similarly 2 comma 7. So I'm plotting 2 comma 7 here. So similarly I'm plotting all these 5 data points. Okay. And now I'm going to draw a curve which can join all these points. So if you look at this uh, plot, we can say that uh, we can you know use a straight line to join all these points right so we get a line like this if you want to write the equation of a line it will be something like y is equal to mx plus c and you will have some value for this m and c so your m is the slope and your c is the intercept of the line and the x is the x-axis value y is the y-axis value so the equation that we have here is y is equal to mx plus c right so the importance of this equation is once you find the value of m and c once you find this uh, you know equation so what happens is let's say that we got this line so we got this relationship if you say that if the x-axis value is 2.5 okay so if the x-axis value is 2.5 you can easily find the y-axis value by just uh, you know finding uh, the corresponding y value here okay so if you just come to this uh, line so you can say that the y-axis value will be 8 so this is how machine learning basically works so it will try to find this equation so in this case the equation is nothing but a line equation right so similarly it will try to find the equation of the line so once you find the equation of a line once you have the value of x you can easily find the value of y by just uh, you know plugging in the values of x so uh, this is similar to the case of that salary and years of experience i have told you before so your model will try to find this equation so once this once the how this how this uh, equation is found is based on the data so we can found, find this equation by uh, substituting this x and y values and once you find this m and c value if you give a new x value your y value will be found so this is simple right and this is basically how a machine learning model works so there is nothing complex about it it will try to look at the data and it will, it will try to relate the x value and the y value and once it has found the relationship between them if you give a new x value it will find the y value so this is how uh, machine learning basically works and i hope you are clear with this so machine learning is nothing but it is a function that relates the features and the target so feature is nothing but you can consider it as uh, x and you can consider your target as y so it will try to find the relationship between them and once it tries to find the relationships like this uh, particular equation so it will try to plug in the values and it will try to find the value 
value of y for new x values so this is how machine learning basically works okay so i hope you are clear with this uh, particular question and the next question which we are going to discuss is what are the different types of machine learning so i hope you everyone of you knows the knows the answer for this and the different types of machine learning are supervised learning and supervised learning and reinforcement learning so uh, let's discuss about supervised and unsupervised and reinforcement learning separately now okay so what is meant by supervised learning in supervised learning the machine learning algorithm learns from labeled data so this labeled data is the important aspect of supervised learning and when we talk about unsupervised learning we use unlabeled data set so that is the difference between them but for now first let's try to understand about supervised learning where we use a labeled data so we have uh, discussed uh, the example before for machine learning right so we want our machine learning model or a machine learning system to determine whether an image represents an apple or a mango so in that case what we will do is we will train our machine learning model with images of apples and mangoes and all the images of apple will be given a label as apple and all the images of mangoes will be given uh, the uh, you know label as mangoes so each images will have annotations so annotations are nothing but the labels and the corresponding labels with them so this data set this image data which contains labels is called as the labeled data so once you give this labeled data to your machine learning model it can you know it can try to find the patterns between the images so it will try to uh, you know relate this images with the uh, label that it has so it will try to uh, say that all the apples are red in color and the, all the apples are shapes like this and all the mangoes will be yellow in color and the shape will be like this so the model will try to find all those patterns and it will relate it to the label that we have so once the model has learned from the data if you give a new image of either apple or a mango and if you don't tell the machine learning model what it is it can uh, predict by itself whether it is an apple or a mango so this is a very simple example that you can think of so this is an example of a supervised learning because it has the labels like apples and mangoes uh, related to all the images in it so this example is an example of a supervised learning and uh, the different supervised learning models that we have are logistic regression support vector machines and uh, different kinds of supervised models okay so we will discuss about that later so what are the different types of model but for now understand that in supervised learning we just use labeled data and now let's discuss what is meant by unsupervised learning so it is just opposite to supervised learning so in unsupervised learning the machine learning algorithm learns from unlabeled data set okay so let's say that similarly we want to we want like similar data set so we have images of apples and mangoes but in that case in this particular case we won't tell the you know machine learning model what this image represents so we won't tell that this image represents apple or we won't tell that this image represents mango we just give this data alone without you know without labels and this data set is called as the unlabeled data so once the unsupervised learning model looks at this data it will try to group the similar data sets okay so it will try to uh, group all the apples together and it will try to group all the mangoes uh, in a separate group so it, it can call this as a group one and, it, uh, and this as group two okay the reason is it doesn't know uh, uh, you know what this image represents because we didn't tell that this is an apple and this is a mango so it will try to group the similar data points together here the similar data points are apples and mangoes so it will try to group apples together and mangoes are together so this is an example of a clustering problem and the different uh, we have again have different clustering algorithms and clustering models like k means clustering hierarchical clustering etc okay so the main difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning is that in supervised learning we use labeled data set whereas in un, uh, in unsupervised learning we use unlabeled data set so that is the main difference between them and we have different models for supervised and unsupervised learning so this is uh, uh, the understanding with this topic and the next interesting thing is reinforcement learning so this reinforcement learning is very different from supervised or unsupervised learning it is like a very interesting aspect as well in machine learning so let's try to understand this reinforcement learning is an area of machine learning concerned with how intelligent agents take actions in an environment to maximize its reward so try to understand this definition so we have an environment okay so we have an environment and we have a machine learning system and this machine learning system will try to take actions in a particular environment in order to maximize its rewards so let's try to understand this definition with uh, 
with a certain example. So in reinforcement learning, there are four factors. One is the environment, the second one is the agent, third is the action, and the fourth is the reward. So uh, this environment can be anything. So I'll, I'll explain you what is with this environment. And the second is agent. So the agent is nothing but your machine learning system. The third is the action. So what your machine learning system is taking, what action your system is taking. So that is uh, the action. And finally, reward. Reward is like uh, what is the final output your machine learning system wants? So that will be your reward. So we can uh, consider uh, a chess as your environment. So this chess board is your environment and there are rules in this chess, right? So similarly, you will have different rules in your environment. So in chess, if we consider chess as environment, the rules can be, uh, we know that this is a pawn and a pawn can move one step forward. And then we have, uh, you know, the uh, we have queen, bishop, uh, knight, etc. So this R shape is called as knight and we have bishop, queen, king, etc. Right? And each of these uh, chess pieces have a specific movements associated with them. So a bishop can move in a certain way, uh, knight can move in a certain way, queen can move in a certain way and so on. So these are the rules of this chess environment. So this will be our environment. So similarly you have different environments and each environment has its own rules. And the agent is our machine learning system. Let's say, let's consider this computer as our machine learning system and this agent will take Take action so what we are basically doing is we are trying to build a system that can play chess okay so this is the agent we are creating that can play chess and the chess is nothing but the environment that we have and this agent should take actions so in this case the action is nothing but playing chess right so let's say that uh, a machine a computer is playing against a person so it has to take decisions it has to take action based on uh, how the person moves the chess pieces right so here the action is playing chess and finally the reward so the reward in this case is what is the probability that the computer will win the game so like if it makes good decision if it makes a good move it will give a po get a positive reward if it makes a bad move if uh, you know if it's a uh, chess piece is uh, got destroyed by the opponent's chess piece then it will get a negative reward okay so this is like a reward and a punishment kind of a thing so this is the important uh, thing about reinforcement learning so you have an environment you have a agent that takes action and based on its action it will give a re it will get a reward if the action is positive if it is favorable for uh, the computer it will get a positive reward like a gift and uh, the if it makes a bad decision it will get a negative reward it is like a punishment okay and the ultimate goal is to win this chess game so this is all about reinforcement learning so we will try to build an agent that can understand the rules of the environment and it can make the actions so that it can uh, you know win this particular game and in each step it will give a small small reward and finally it will get a cumulative reward so the cumulative reward is nothing but winning the chess game so reinforcement learning is mainly used in game playing systems so we have a lot of uh, you know artificial intelligence in games right so those are built using this reinforcement learning and we know robots so all the robots are built using this re reinforcement learning so all the software and our robot things our robot takes actions is all the things are based on reinforcement learning if you think about a, a robot which is walking so in that case the agent is nothing but your robot the environment is the earth the place where it is walking is the environment and the action is nothing but walking so the reward is if the robot walks properly, it will get a positive reward. And if it fails down, it will get a negative reward. So this is all about reinforcement learning where we will try to build an agent that can take certain action in an environment and based on its action, it will give a reward. So if you understand these four aspects, environment, agent, action and reward clearly, you can easily explain reinforcement learning. Okay. So I hope you are clear with all these three uh, different types of machine learning, which are supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning. And now we can move on to the next question. So the next question is, what are the different types of supervised learning? And we have already discussed this about a lot in our course. So the different types of supervised learning that we have are uh, classification and regression. So let's try to understand what is meant by this classification and what is meant by regression. So classification is about predicting a class or discrete value, whereas regression is about predicting a quantity or continuous value. So in my previous example, we have seen how we can use a machine learning model to predict whether an image is a an apple or a mango right so in this case we can say that apple is a class and mango is a different class so in those cases we will try to predict the class of uh, data okay or what is the type of the data 
say for example we can also uh, you know try to predict whether a person is a male or female based on uh, certain features or we can also uh, try to find whether an answer is true or false based on some data so these are classification where we will try to classify the data like a male or female true or false or you can uh, you know look at an image and say whether it is red in color or blue in color and so on so these are classes whereas regression is something where we will try to predict a quantity or continuous value like salary age and price so i have explained you the salary example right where we will try to predict the salary salary of a person given their years of experience right so in this case we are trying to find the accurate value so that is a continuous value and we are trying to find it so this kind of problems is called as a regression and a kind of problems where we are trying to just predict the class whether the type it is called as a classification so if i want to give you another example let's say that we want a machine learning system to predict whether a person gets a job or not so that will be a classification so because this is a yes or no question right so the one possibility is that the person will get a job the second possibility that he won't get a job so this is a classification and if you want to predict what is the salary that a person will get in a job then it is a regression because we are predicting a value like salary right so this is an example of a regression problems so these are the two different types of supervised learning and this is also very important okay so the final question for today is uh, you know we are going to discuss about some applications of machine learning so the interviewer may ask you to give some you know interesting applications about machine learning so let's try to you know uh, answer this in a good way possible so machine learning is used in a lot of domains and uh, some of the critical applications of machine learning are health care so let's say that we are uh, you know we are a machine learning engineer and we have tied up with the radiology department of an hospital so radiology department is you know is one of the department in hospitals and this department's main job is to uh, look at the scans x-rays and to find what is the disease a person is having or what is uh, the defect uh, they are having and so on okay so they try to find what is the disease he has been going through based on this data like x-rays scans and etc so uh, this radiology is one aspect where we can use machine learning so say for for example let's say that we want to uh, uh, you know look at the brain scans of people and we want to find whether the person has any defect in their brain whether they have any problems or not some uh, you know infections or anything so we can train our machine learning with a lot of uh, you know mri scans of brain so once the model has learned from it if you give a new scan your machine learning model can predict whether that person is normal or he is having any problem with him okay so once you find that uh, they can uh, make a uh, procedures and they can uh, you know treat the person uh, based on the diagnosis that can give so diagnosis is one of the important aspect in treating a person in medicine because like if it takes a lot of time to diagnose what is the disease then it will be very hard to save the person and uh, if doctors can uh, you know diagnose very quickly then it is very helpful for them because they can start the treatment right away so healthcare is one of the main fields where we use machine learning and a lot of applications are you know implemented in this say for example diabetic retinopathy prediction so that was built by uh, google's deep mind so you can do some research about it so that is one applications we can explain them and the next is uh, the autonomous car so we have already already discussed that uh, an autonomous car makes a lot of decisions on its own and it is completely based on uh, you know deep learning so that is another example and uh, the third example which can give them is computer vision so computer vision is like before computers you know cannot look at an image and tell whether you know what that particular image is so uh, that is one main thing which we are working on using machine learning and deep learning now if you train your uh, deep learning model with lots of images of different objects and uh, if you give a new image it can tell you what the object is so computer vision is one of the main applications and the different applications we can say in computer vision are the face recognitions that we have in our phone iris scanner etc so these are uh, some important applications of computer vision where we use uh, Uh, deep learning and the other one is natural language processing so uh, we would have uh, noticed a lot of chatbots in websites right when if you ask something it can uh, give you the appropriate answer so and this is called as natural language processing so this is another example of another applications of machine learning and deep learning and your google assistant is also an example of this natural language processing where it will try to understand what the speaker or what the user is saying and based on th- based on that it will uh, try to give them the appropriate answer for them so these are 
आर सम इंटरेस्टिंग एप्लीकेशन ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग एंड आई होप यू आर क्लियर विद ऑल दिस क्वेश्चन ओके सो दीज आर वेरी बेसिक क्वेश्चन हेट दीज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो ट्राई टू मेक अ गुड नोट ऑफ ऑल दिस क्वेश्चन यू नो इन योर ओन वर्ड्स यू कैन यूज डिफरेंट एग्जाम्पल्स और यू कैन एड योर ओन पॉइंट इन इट एंड इन द अपकमिंग वीडियोज इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सीरीज एल ऑल्सो मूव ऑन टू अदर कॉम्प्लेक्स क्वेश्चन एंड मोर एडवांस क्वेश्चन ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग एंड वॉन्स वी कंप्लीट दिस थियरिटिकल एस्पेक्ट्स वी विल मूव ऑन टू दी अदर एस्पेक्ट्स लाइक द वॉट इज द पैथन प्रोग्रामिंग क्वेश्चन दट कैन बी एज इन मशीन लर्निंग इंटरव्यू एंड फाइनली वी कैन यू नो take a interview scenario where we will try to work on different projects and so on okay so i hope you enjoyed this video and this is useful for you and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching